Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. We can do nothing of ourselves. Without you, O oh Lord, we are nothing. John the Baptist said, I must de decrease that you will increase Amen. to fulfill all righteousness. Amen. We have not come here to serve a man. We have not come here for a roll call. Mm -hmm. We have come here, O oh Lord, by divine mandate Amen. to worship the Holy King, yes. the Holy God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. We pray that the sick here will be healed. Yes. The blind will see. Yes. The lame will walk. Yes. The dead will rise. O oh Lord, we pray for diverse breakthroughs. Yes. He said, forget not the former things, for I will do a new thing, and it shall spring forth, and Amen. you shall see it. Yes. Father, Lord God, let every word that comes from me, Lord, come from your throne room, Amen. that it will bring deliverance, salvation, and healing. Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Mr. Edu, you are welcome. Mr. Edu traveled from Houston. He's originally from Louisiana. He traveled from Houston. He's a Ghanaian. I traveled from Houston to visit the family here in Dallas and I spoke with him yesterday and he's been here. Let's give him a hand. Yes, we will let you create the church at the end, Mr. Edu. It's a, you know, it's a pleasure to see you again. <laughs> Pastor Mike, I hope last week your sermon in the other church went well. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. All the time. That is why when we sing songs like that then we understand the meaning. It moves our souls. Amen. It moves our souls. Somebody, if it's not God, you see, Pastor Mike, sometimes God uses problems to hide us. Sometimes God uses problems to reveal our identities. Amen. Somebody without problems, you may not know who you are. Yes. Do you know that the best gift, sometimes, not always, is that God can give a child of God or a man of God is delay. <laughs> this is what the Bible says, Sila. Without certain delays, people will get ahead of themselves. I'm not saying everyone. Every case is different. How many times had there been an accident on a highway and you were just delayed a bit to go for your cell phone, mm. to go for your wallet? How many times? In the realms of the spirit, that is how it is. You may be delayed and you will pray till you are blue in the face. You don't understand what is going on. God wants to spare your life and preserve you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today we want to talk about honor. You know the Americans spell it H-O-N-O-R. And the British spell it H-O-N-O-U-R. It's all honor. So please, if my phonetics is not coming out well, know that I'm using the, maybe the other one. <laughs> I'll make a disclaimer before I start. Hallelujah. God has a sense of humor. Hallelujah. Sha da ga da ga da ga da. When the pastor comes and starts praying in the spirit, you know he has been fasting. Ma ze ma ga day. If you are not fasting, ah day ge day ge day. Fasting does not answer all. It's a means to an end, but not an end in itself. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah 58. He said, in the day of your fast, I'll break the bands of wickedness and I'll let the oppressed go free. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When they fasted, he said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work I have for them. Today we want to talk about Hannah. Hallelujah. Amen. Not the Anna who was the wife of Elkanah, the mother of Samuel. So understand my accent. I'm talking about H-O-N-O-R. Anna. Hallelujah. Amen. When I started studying about Anna, I realized that Fridays I need to dress well for our Bible studies, <laughs> our prayer meeting. Because, Mr. Edu, I come in uh, my sandals. It doesn't have an, uh, 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 what do we call it? It's not buckled at the back. It's not buckled at the back, my sandals. Because you, you have to honor yourself for God to honor you. Amen. You have to honor yourself. When you come and I'm in my maybe light suit and I'm in my shoe, you know, wow, the pastor means business. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to talk about honor. It's so, so important. One man of God, Mike Medock, told another pastor, honor is more important than your intelligence. Mm. And he said, honor, in certain cases, can be more important than faith. Mm. That one, I've not experimented it. I've not researched it. Hallelujah. Amen. Honor is key. Now, what is the meaning of honor? It's not respect. Mm. It's a high form of respect. Amen. Oh, you didn't hear me. Amen. I don't think you understood me. Mm. Without understanding, there's no breakthrough. He said, give me understanding and I'll leave. Mm. Psalm 119, 145. 
David said, the entrance of your word brings light. Give me understanding and I will survive in my storms. Amen. Give me understanding and I will prevail. The situation not prevailing. Hallelujah. Amen. So, honor is key. Hallelujah. Amen. Bible says that if you honor me, I will honor you. I'm quoting 1 Samuel 2.20. Let's start from there. 1 Samuel 2.30 If you honor me, I will honor you. If you despise me, he said, I will esteem you lightly. Say the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we project it? 1 Samuel chapter 2. Oh, somebody, I hope this will help all of us. It started helping me. So I hope it will help you too. Before we finish, look for three people to honor. When we talk about honor, it's not necessarily money. We have to understand. Hallelujah. Honor means to venerate. Somebody will say, Pastor, you are using two big words. The words are too big. And I tell you, Mr. Edu, anytime I fast, the words become big. <laughs> Hallelujah. <Amen. laughs> to venerate is to esteem somebody highly. To respect somebody highly. Hallelujah. Amen. Number one group of people, your parent. If your parent is alive or your father, your mother is alive, show a higher form of respect. If your father, your mother, they are not alive, look for a senior sister, a senior brother. Hallelujah. Oh, I, I don't think the church is hearing Amen. me. Look for an auntie and respect that person highly. Not just res normal respect. A higher respect. One is parent. Two, pastors. Number three, what do you think will be the third one? Your boss. Your, boss. Your boss. Don't say, oh, my boss is too known. I don't like my boss. It doesn't matter the character of your parent. It doesn't matter the character of your boss. Don't say bad things about your boss. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the law of honor. He said, Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that my house, I'm reading 1 Samuel 2 30, and the house of my father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me. For them that honor me, this is the part we are interested in, the second part. For them that honor me, I will what? Honor. Now, Pastor Mike, I'm going to drop the, this mic. What? There is a law called gravity. I don't see it. It works. It works. This is the law of honor. If you honor God, he will honor you. You can't break his word. He said, I've sworn to my servant, uh, I've sworn to my servant David that I will not lie to him. I've lifted my word above my name. He said, for them that honor me, I will honor somebody begin to change your life by this word. Meditate on it and so shall it be. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. If you need honor, begin to honor God. How do you honor the Lord? Obey his word. Hallelujah. Amen. Bible says in Psalm 1 verse 18, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing and you are obedient, man of God, he said we shall possess the land. Honor God and he will honor you. The law of honor. Hallelujah. Amen. The law of honor. If you honor God, he will honor you. Now let's go to Romans chapter 13. Romans 13. Now, many people are like, oh, let's fast. I know pastors and prophets, Mr. Edu, who have fasted. Nothing happened. So they started honoring other pastors. They started honoring other pastors. And things began to change in their lives. The fact that maybe I post something on Facebook and I have a thousand likes doesn't mean I'm bigger than the pastor who has been helping me. Ah, 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 ah. Pastor Mike here has been in this state for a long time. Amen. I have to not respect him, but to honor him. Amen. Bible says, honor all men. Amen. So doing some of entertained angels unaware. Carter, you don't know the day of your salvation and the day of your breakthrough. Abraham saw three men coming. He went to serve them. You don't know who comes into your life for such a time as this. Hallelujah. Amen. Let every soul be what? Subject unto the higher powers. Let every soul, not the Hindu, not the Muslim, not the Christian, but let every soul be subject for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Let's continue, please. Romans 13, 2. Whosoever therefore resisted the power, resisted the ordinances of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves 
damnation. Let's look at the verse. Yes, it's, it's enough. Now this is what the word of God is saying. If your mother is a witch, excuse my vocabulary, if your mother is not a good woman, that's not what the word of God says. You have to honor God by honoring your mother. Amen. You are not worshiping your mother. Mm. You are worshiping God by obeying his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Bible says that word. What is the first co- what is the commandment with promise? Honor your, your father and your mother. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Honor your father and your mother. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you know why Jesus could not do great miracles in his hometown? Pastor Mike, the reason why Jesus could not do great miracles in his hometown is because they knew he was the son of God. They knew he was working in signs and wonders and miracles. But they thought they were equal to him because he was a carpenter's son. Ah, Katabai, I don't know who is hearing. Can you perceive when a prophet comes to your house? A friend of mine one day asked me, if Elijah came to your house, will you see him? Will you recognize him? There were so many widows in Zarafa, but the prophet Elijah was sent to the widow of Zarafa. And then there is also the Shunammite woman, man of God. The Shunammite woman. Every season, a prophet will pass a certain way. The woman said, I observe, I calculate, I can perceive that this is a prophet. Oh, that yeah. is key. You can't miss that moment. You can't miss that moment. Amen. I perceive. I can recognize that this man has a special anointing. This man has a special grace. Let's build a house for him. Let's make space for him. That in his surgeon, in his travel, he will stay and abide. And the anointing will rest in our home too. Amen. Choose three people. Not only today, Sunday. Honor them continuously. See if this word will come to pass. These are not my words. Who have you honored? It can be your teacher, the students here. Your teacher, don't belittle your teacher because the teacher cannot pronounce certain words. Those were some of the mistakes we made. Because the teacher is short. Faith, are you listening? Because the teacher maybe has a mark on the face. Don't do that. If your friends are doing that, tell them, Pastor Sam said no. Honor those in authority so that you don't go against the ordinances of God. Bible says, in a great house, there are many vessels. I'm quoting 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20. In a great house, man of God, there are many vessels. When people go literally to a house, you find utensils. Some of them are made of silver. Oh, minister shepherd who said, I like the golden vessel or the golden plate to eat in it. They are gold. Some are silver. Bible says they are also wood and earth. This is what it adds. Some to honor and some to dishonor. If there is no honor in your life, begin to now use this scripture to move. To move. I'm not saying worship people. People who do not regard God, pastors who are not of God, don't honor them. It's a waste of your money. It's a waste of your time. People who are boastful, don't honor them. Bible says, your zeal has consumed me. And Jesus speaking. He said, your zeal has consumed me. What that means is that it stands for justice. It stands for truth. Hallelujah. Amen. The law of Hannah. Now, those who have studied Joseph, Look at that man's life, full of integrity. Joseph, full of honor. Somebody told me something yesterday. No, a week ago, I was talking to a pastor friend. This is what he said. He said, did you know that among the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob was different. He saw visions. He had a revelation with the angels ascending and descending. Up until then, People only knew about angels coming down. People didn't know angels can also go up. He had that revelation. But he was lied to that his son was lost. And he believed a lie for a long time. 
God, it was quiet. Somebody, you have prayed till you are blue in the face. You have fasted and God is quiet. The God who keeps quiet. I call him the God who sometimes is silent. You talk to prophet, nothing. No dream, no vision. So this man was carrying a saw. He was carrying a wound. He was carrying a lie. Do you know why that is so important? He said, if God had revealed to this man, this strong man, this giant, that your son is in Egypt or was in Egypt, he would have carried forces. He loved his son so much because his son was born to him in his last days, in his latter years. He made him a coat of many colors. Because of that, his brothers jealous him the more. And he had a dream. In the dream, they were binding sheaves of grains. And suddenly his sheep rose up. Somebody, I speak the sudden anointing upon you. The sudden breakthrough upon you. The sudden blessing upon you. Suddenly there will be a shift in the spirit. Suddenly there will be a revival. That what they said is dead is now walking. It's now speaking in the name of Jesus. So if he had known that his son was alive, he would have guided forces and they, have, they would have gone to rescue him. And the will of God will not have come to pass. Oh, somebody, I don't know if I'm talking to you. God's delay is not a sign of his denial. Somebody, oh, somebody, look for somebody to honor. Not just respect. It's higher than respect. Don't stop there till you see the benefits. Till you see the benefits. People will come to you as ordinary people. Not everybody is ordinary. Some people have been specially anointed. Specially graced. Some people have paid the price for an anointing. When you recognize them, you have to know how to draw. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, a wise man knows how to draw things from an old man. From another wise man. It's like drawing water from a well. If you are not wise, you walk with the anointed and there will be no pool. Hallelujah. But today, our eyes are being opened. Amen. Now, let's look at certain principles of honor. If you don't give honor, you will not receive honor. If you don't give honor, you will not receive honor. If you show people respect, they will show you respect. When you honor God, God will what? Honor you. That's what we saw in 1 Samuel chapter 13. He who honors me shall be honored. He who despises me shall be lightly esteemed. Ephesians chapter 2, chapter 6 verse 2. Somebody, if you don't like your mother or your father, it doesn't mean dishonor them. It doesn't mean dishonor them. It's the first commandment with promise. Ephesians 6 2. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Which is the first commandment with promise. How many people want to live long? I think all of us. Amen. Bible says that honor your parents so that your life will be what? Longer Amen. on earth. Honor your parents. It's like the law of gravity. This is not my law. He has, he watches over his word to fulfill. So that scripture we read in Romans chapter 13 is very important. He said, there is no power except God. He is the one who ordains authority. Our bosses, our leaders. So somebody, don't say, oh, if the democratic president come or the republican president i will not support this one or that one is god who institute kings amen he puts in the seasons and the times you don't control when it's going to snow or when it's going to rain hallelujah amen. so you honor those who are in authority amen. let's pray for governor abbott let's amen. pray for the mayor of dallas i think johnson amen. let's pray for all of them hallelujah amen. irrespective of our political persuasions Hallelujah. Because that's what the Bible says. I'd rather obey God than to follow men. Amen. Now 
Now let's go to Proverbs 30, 11 to 13. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praise me, my Savior, all the day long. Proverbs 30, verses 11 and 12. You can't respect your parents and disrespect your wife or your husband. You cannot do that. You can't respect your wife or your pastor and disrespect your husband. Hallelujah. So these are laws that we don't control. So if we want the laws to work for us, we have to obey. Amen. He said, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Proverbs 30, 11 and 12. There is a generation that curses their father and do not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. This is a generation where they live with their mothers. They say, Mama, I'm going to do a schedule. I wash the dishes, you wash the dishes. <laughs> An African man will say, Who born you by mistake? <laughs> I wash the dishes, you wash the dishes. They say, Ah, the culture in America. Don't do that. You see your parent carrying load. If you can, faith, go get it from your parent. You are honoring your parent, your mother Amen. or your father. God will honor you. Amen. There are things you will not lend them in calculus. You will not lend them. Where is Matthew? In geometry. You will not lend them, Sister Janelle, in social studies. Jesse. Sister Jesse. <laughs> Sister Janelle. You will not lend them in arithmetic. Amen. You honor somebody. When we were young, we were always looking for who was carrying something from the market. And then we'll run and get and they say, Oh, Kwesi, that means Shirao. Kwesi, God bless you. Amen. We have to honor people. Look for people to honor. It's not necessarily money. We will look at ways that you can honor people. We have to honor spiritual authority. Let's look at Hebrews 13 17. Hebrews 13, 17. Obey them that have what? Rule over you and submit yourselves. For they watch up for your souls that they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. Hallelujah. Amen. The pastors who are listening we are accountable. You know many pastors, man of God, used to throw this word around. I'm your spiritual father. We have to be careful. We have to be careful who we call our spiritual father. Many people have ended up in trouble through that. I have made that mistake too. <laughs> but that's not the topic today. Be careful. Let God lead you. He said, call no man father. I said your father in heaven. So, he said, obey them that have rule over you. Submit yourselves. For they watch for your soul. Those pastors, they are accountable. They are accountable on the day of judgment. They are accountable here. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 49 verse 20. There is a scripture that I don't know if I captured, but I will paraphrase it. Man that is in honor and understand not is like the beast that perish. Junior, can I have the NIV on that one? People 
who have wealth but lack understanding are like the beast that perish. We need honor. If you have money, look for honor. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. If you don't have money, look for honor. Honor will bring the other things. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the scripture I was looking for. I will paraphrase it. He said, The elders, honor the elders of the church. Especially, he said, No, give double honor. Matthew, if you can Google it, let's use the benefit of technology. Give double honor to the elders, especially those who preach and teach the gospel. Amen. I don't know if you heard me. Amen. You have a pastor in your family. Don't joke with that pastor. You have a minister in your family. Don't joke. That, Mister, do you know why? Many church members don't know that if you are called of God, you pay a price for the anointing. You pay. A, it's not Bible school. It's not theology. God takes you through a process. It takes people with special eyes to see the process. So if you are in a family or you know somebody who is a minister, who doesn't boast, those who boast, you may be honoring ego. You may be honoring pride. You don't want to do that. Stay away from those things. Amen. One of the emblems, one of the uh, duplicates of God, one of the accolades, description of God is humility. We saw this in the book of Philippians chapter 2. Though he was in the form of God, he did not count it robbery to be God. He did not count it robbery to be equal to God. He emptied himself of pride. He emptied himself of self. He emptied himself of ego. And he took in the form, the similitude of a man. Amen. He took upon himself. Jesus could have come as God. His father could have put his hand on him and anointed him. And then he would come and die in his sleep. Mm. The young pastors would say, pray for me, anoint me so that I will get your anointing. It doesn't work like that. Mm. Go pay your own price. Mm. Go carry your own cross. Mm. There is no shortcut in the kingdom. Amen. Young pastors don't want to hear this. People go to the mountains as prophet. Katabaya, katabaya. Father, open my eyes to see. They see and now they are in the town. Mm. They don't use wisdom. Come, I've seen the prophecy. Come, let me pray for you. There's nothing wrong with it. They say your mother has done this. They bring division in families. They bring division in families. It's your father's, it's your wife's mother who is responsible for this. Wisdom. When you are going through fire, God is building wisdom. Amen. God is building wisdom. Amen. Wisdom is the principal thing. Did you find that scripture? The elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of what? Double honor. How many of us are doing this? Honor mm. people. Minister Constant, God bless you. When you were ministry, I was like, how did you come to this church? Shanda baba. Worthy of double honor, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. Amen. Before I became a pastor, I thought pastoral was just a walk in the park. <laughs> I thought it was a walk in the park. You articulate. You can read and write. You can speak English. You can read the scriptures. You can fast and pray. But that's not how it is. There's more to that. When somebody calls you, you don't like the person, you cannot pick the call. That is one option. When you pick the call, don't let your emotions take over. Use scriptures. And always remember who you are talking to. If you are the kids here, faith, you guys, are you hearing? If you are talking to your boss, remember, don't think you are the same because of America and the laws. Equality causes people not to honor others. Oh, after all, we can all read the Bible. After all, we can all fast. Mercy. I have certain pastors I respect. The more I study this, the more I've seen that I've made errors. I'm not worshiping them, but I talk to them, okay, all right. One time a pastor came to visit us recently. I asked the pastor, advise us. What advice will you give to us? You have to let people feel important. Hallelujah. When you honor him, somebody else is going to honor you. I've received many prophecies that many pastors will come and submit under the ministry of God. It doesn't come on a silver platter. 
it takes honor. I have to respect those pastors. Three groups of people we have to honor. Those above us, those on our level, and those below us. Amen. We cannot treat our children anyhow. Which scripture is it? It said, do not offend the children. I'm paraphrasing. Amen. Psalm 49 verse 20. Oh, honor. Now, I can't take vitamin K and expect it to give me the benefit of vitamin C. I can't do that. I can't follow the principle of honor and expect it to work for me just like fasting. It has its benefits. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean because of honor, now I don't pray anymore. They are different. If I don't take vitamin C or vitamin K, I may lack an important nutrient. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, what are the benefits of honor? One, you are shielded. Second Timothy 3. Let's look at from verse 1. The shield, you are shielded. Katabasata. Oh, BibleGateway.com is a free app. You can use it to search. Anna. So many scriptures on Anna. Look at this. This is a popular scripture I use a lot. Psalm 84 verse 11. We'll come to that later. This is what Psalm 84 11 says. The Lord is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. That's the old King James. The NIV says the Lord will give grace and honor. The Lord will give grace and honor. No good thing will, will, will he withhold from those who walk blameless or uprightly. The Lord will give what? Grace and honor. Somebody say, God, give me honor. God, give me honor. God, give me honor. God, give me honor. In Jesus' name. In Jesus when the honor of God comes upon you, Oh, Masata Bakata. Hende Mahando. Kende Masokata. Ah, there was a mark of Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth was locked up in Lodaba. How many people were here during the lock, lockdown? During COVID? Mm. It, some cities were shut in. You cannot mm. enter or go out. Mm. It was like Lodaba. It was shut in. The economy was porous. Nothing was happening. It was an agricultural economy. Mm. Nothing was happening. Nothing could grow in Lodaba. And Mephibosheth was there. But because of the law of Anna, the father of Mephibosheth, Jonathan, Katabaya. That's why somebody, you cannot always be on top. There are times God will hide you by bringing you down. Recognize your friends who are on top. Because God will bring you up again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So Jonathan saw that there was something unique about David. And he helped David escape from his father. He honored David. And David went. He said, is there anyone among the descendants of Saul? They said, there is one called Mephibosheth. But where he is, it's locked out. I can't, you cannot even go. Mm. David said, no. Because of what the father did. You can't be a man of character. A man of honor. Without remembrance. Without remembrance. Because of what the father did, let us go immediately and fetch him. Amen. Let us go immediately and look for Mephibosheth. Amen. That is why everybody, you have to believe that it's possible. No yes. matter how broken it is. A year ago, Donald Trump was not in the mix. Mm. He wasn't in the conversation. Mm. But now, he's more in the conversation to become the president. Mm. Bible says, Sila. Mm. Everything is possible. Amen. Amen. The dead bones will rise. The dead will rise. They told Jesus, the friend you love is sick. The more they told him, the more he went about his business. I was listening to Archbishop Idahosa. He said, the more they told the Jesus, Jesus went about his business. And then they brought report that he's dead. Lazarus is dead. Then Jesus said, it's good that he's dead. It's good that you are in pain. Why will God take glory in your pain? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. Second Timothy 3. Is that it? Let's go to the next one. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy. Let's continue. Without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good. Let's continue. Trash rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Second Timothy. 
three. Okay. The point there is, in the last days, people will not honor good things, good people. Hallelujah. But we are different. The second benefit of honor, it gives you virtue. It grants you virtue. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 7. Let's go to Hebrews 7, 7. And without doubt, the lesser is blessed by the greater. Amen. So look for people in authority. People in authority. And let them bless you. Amen. Some people carry the blessing. One group is parents. Parents. They carry blessing. So when this man, a blind man, Isaac, he told his son, go and fetch me meat that I may eat and bless you. That I may eat and bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Genesis 27, 1 to 4. They are custodians of the blessing. Custodians of the blessing. Genesis 27, 1 to 4. When Isaac was old and his eyes were so weak that he could not no longer see, he called for Esau, his older son, and said to him, My son, here I am. He answered, Let's continue, please. Isaac said, I'm now old. I'm now an old man and don't know the day of my death. Let's go on. Now then, get your equipment, your quiver and bow, and go out to the open country to hunt some wild game for me. Prepare me the kind of tasty food I like and bring it to me to eat so that I may give you my blessing before I die. Amen. It's a social. So the question becomes, couldn't he have blessed him anyhow? Mm. You want a man of God to bless you? Mm. Go give him something. You see, many pastors have politicized this topic. I'm not merchandising the scriptures or the word of God. Go give him something. He said, Isaac could have just blessed the son. He said, go give me meat. Go satisfy my soul that I may bless you. Oh, somebody did not hear me. Amen. I know the church doesn't like this. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> In 1 Samuel, Saul he didn't know he was going to be king. He was set up by God. The father's donkey was missing. Then the servant told him, there is a seer in this town. Let's go talk to the seer. His words does not fall to the ground. Whatever he said comes to pass. Let's go see the seer. This is what the servant said. You have to understand certain spiritual things. Some pastors will not force you to bring money. Thank God I'm one of them. Amen. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. The reason why it's bad is pastors who have seen money before, if you are not careful, you can walk in pride. It's very subtle. Those who have not seen money, they will even take it from your teeth. <laughs> they will take it from your teeth. One man of God that I, I, who is my client, this is what he told me. He told me that the pastors are greedy. What is Some of the pastors are greedy. Some of the things which is not for them, they want to take it. When you do that, that person you are taking the money from, next time he will not give it to you. He will see that you are greedy. That's why I love Elisha. I love Elisha. Why? This man full of pride comes to stand before him. Called Naaman, a captain of the army of the Syrians. Yet, he was a leper. He was a captain of the army of the Syrians. And he told him, go dip yourself in the river. Mm. Because of pride, he couldn't bring himself down. Mm. Because of pride, he couldn't bring himself down. When he humbled himself, you cannot be honored without humility. Mm. Where there is no humility, there is no honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When he humbled himself, what happened? He went, first he said, I did not better rivers in Damascus. But when he humbled himself, he was made whole. When he humbled himself, he was made whole. And guess what? He thought this prophet Elisha was like an ordinary prophet. Father, make me like Elisha. Hmm. 
pay. The person is bringing hundred thousand dollars to you. Elisha said, "Go with your money." Because you could smell pride. I don't like money with pride. He said, "Go with your money." Mazoma Handa. How many pastors and prophets can do this? He's not moved by what he sees. He's not moved by money. That is why to be a genuine man of God, God has to take every blood from you. You have to go through the fire for him to tell you that you depend on him, not people. You depend on him and not money. You depend on God alone. I love Job. He maintained his integrity. The wife who did not understand the situation said, Curse God and die. He said, Curse God and die. That was the understanding of the wife. The understanding of the friends. They came to Job, Eliab, Abinadab. They said, you have sinned against God. No righteous man can be in this situation. Because suddenly he lost all his business. Suddenly he lost all his friends. Which good God will do this? Impute sickness. He was covered with boils. Job knew his God. It's not head knowledge. It's experiential knowledge. If you have that type of knowledge of God, you don't bow when there is trouble. Hallelujah. Amen. So the man said, go bring me the food so that I will eat and bless you. Amen. The servant of Saul told Saul, there's a seer here, but let's go look. Do we have something to give to him? Don't do what God has not told you. I have given out of my emotions. It didn't benefit me. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hannah will bring multiplication. How many people know which verse in Psalm 91? We've all quoted Psalm 91 verbatim. How many know which verse has Anna in it? Psalm 91. He said, in time of trouble, you will call me. Psalm 91 verse 15. In time of trouble, you will call me and I will, I will what? Hear you. I will deliver you from trouble and honor you. Amen. Can we project it? Amen. Oh, Mark. Oh, somebody, you are not excited. Amen. What I'm telling you now is more than a thousand dollars. Yes. He said, in time of trouble, I will answer you and I will be with you in the trouble, in the fire. He said, I will be with you. There are certain fires. Please. This one is not a pleasant thing I'm going to say. Certain fires, God will allow you to be in for some time. <laughs> it's not comfortable at all for a purpose for a purpose count it all joy when you pass through diverse trials and tribulation for the trial of your faith will work patient and patient when it has had its entire course entire course you have knowledge you will be whole lacking nothing lacking nothing now your wisdom is more than Solomon your wisdom is more than David so that the queen of Sheba who travel to come and seek your wisdom. Is God not wonderful? Amen. So there are certain fires they are good for us. He said, you will call upon me. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Oh my God, Abazabaya. Your trouble, God is with you. Amen. Oh, that is something we don't hear in the church. In your trouble, in your predicament, yes. in your affliction, he said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. Yes. I will be with you to the end of the days. Yes. God is with you. If you don't think like that, the devil will tear you up. Mm. He will let you go through all the, the universe mm. in your mind. What you did wrong. Mm. What your father did wrong. Mm. What your mother did wrong. Mm. What your ancestors have done wrong. And you'll be looking for a man who has supernatural powers mm. to say, hey! And your situation will change. Mm. Mercy. But God said, wherever you are, I'm with you. And the more you believe this, the more you have your deliverance. Amen. The more you accept this, the more you have your salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is a sun and a shield. Yeah. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk blameless. If you believe it, it will happen to you. Hallelujah. Amen. The, the, the problem is we don't believe. We don't believe. That's why I like Psalm 20. I'm going to paraphrase Psalm 20. He said, you call upon me in time of trouble and I will answer you. You will call upon me. Say, may the God of Israel remember your sacrifice and send you help from the sanctuary. Amen. And send you help from the sanctuary. Amen. Oh, Mr. Kid, Mr. Jude, I will just paraphrase this. You can listen to the video later. We are talking about honor. When you honor your mother, God will honor you. 
Amen. It's a principle, just like the law of gravity. Amen. I threw my handkerchief, it's coming down. Mm. I don't control that law. Mm. So the more you honor that woman who has been there for you, tooth and nail, mm. the more God will honor you. Amen. It's a law that you cannot break. Amen. I said, look for three people and honor. Amen. Hallelujah. Honor God, it will bring us multiplication. Amen. Let's look at Matthew 13. We'll close in the next five minutes. Amen. Matthew 13, 57 to 58. We've established the fact that honor brings what? Honor. Don't say, as for my mother, she talks too much. Hey, don't say that. Anybody in authority, don't say anything against that person. When you do that, you are standing going against God. We saw that in Romans 13. Don't break the ordinances of God. It's not because your mother or your father is a good man. Your father may have a bad character. Feel. Don't go to your room when I spank you and, <laughs> and call me bad names. When you do that, me, I will not hear. But you are going against God. I may not be the best father for you. You understand? But you have to honor the word of God. He said, I share my glory with no man. Amen. I'm not taking God's glory. That's the word of God. You can't have two fathers or two mothers. Amen. And they took offense at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is without honor except in his own town and in his own home. And he did not do many miracles there because of lack of faith. They refused to honor Jesus. They said he's a carpenter's son. There is somebody close to you who has a key to your destiny. But you despise the person. It will not work for you. It will not work for you. Hallelujah. That is why it's very incumbent. It is important. It is necessary that you find keys around you. The, the Shunammite woman said, I perceive that he's a prophet. Let's make a room for him so that when he's passing, let me show you one secret about prophet. Genuine prophet. If you're able to know that they are prophets, they are true. The way they will pray to bless you is different. <laughs> the blessing, the, you see, there are different types of prayers. We are not 100% always in the spirit. So when you identify a genuine prophet and you tell him he's a prophet because of this, 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 there's an alignment of the spirit. He will say something to you. You'll be surprised. Amen. Amen. But when you don't acknowledge that office, he will, he will recoil to his shells. And he will just say, okay, it is well. Okay, it is well. Because if not recognize, you don't know who you are talking to. Okay, it is well. God will do it. Especially when he's telling you something and you disbelieve. Or when the prophet is saying something. Prophets who fast. When they are talking to you and you interact with them, they will be quiet. Because when you fast, you don't feel like talking. So when he's talking and the thing is coming from the spirit, God is going to do this. And now you, you take the topic up. You will be quiet. It takes deep understanding to know this. You will be quiet. You realize the prophet is not talking again. He's tired. He's quiet. He's quiet. You have cut the spirit. Bible said, don't quench the spirit. Where you have been sealed unto the day of your redemption. Honor brings favor. Amen. That commands wealth. Amen. Now, how do we receive honor? True, we said honor is not just respect. Honor is what? High respect. Yes. High respect. So, Mr. Kobina, if you respect your mom, that's not honor. Sorry, I'm picking on you. <laughs> that honor is what? High respect. Amen. It goes against common, it's not common respect. High, oh, mama, is the food done? Can I help you? I was given an, an illustration about when we were young. And the elders are coming with their load. Quickly, we'll go and get it. Oh, Kwesi Yamin Shrao. Kwesi, God bless you. They will give you honor because you have gone out of your way to do that. Amen. Oh, Mama, today, is there something I can do for you? Faith. Amen. I've told you when Mama is cooking, always go by. Amen. It's Anna. You are honoring her. She'll teach you some secrets. Amen. But if you don't go close to her, she'll be quiet. That's how it is. You can't draw from a wise man without honor. Hallelujah. Amen. So today, you have heard the truth. Amen. You cannot say you didn't hear it. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. So number one is respect. Let's 
round this up. Number two is to obey the word of God. To obey the word of God. That is one way to honor God. Another is giving. Let's look at Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. And then we'll end. And not the Lord of your substance and your first fruit. Yes. Yes. You are not doing it because of the pastor. Because God will share his glory with nobody. You are doing it because of God. It is your mother's birthday. Even if it's not a birthday, buy something for her. Your father's, your, you know, your, yes, do something for your, honor them. And they will, they will tell you something. <laughs> These are secrets we didn't know when we were young. So Matthew, I know Matthew will tell me sometimes Mother's Day, you know we men, sometimes we are so flat now. When we got married, we'll buy flowers. After 10 years, you're like, oh, let me it's just relax. Like Matthew you. will tell me, Daddy, it's Mother's Day. Are we going to get something? I say, ah, Matthew. In my head, I'll be like, ah, I didn't want to go to town today. <laughs> but tomorrow is Sunday. So I'll just, uh, what's the word? Uh, grudgingly, I'll wake up and then I'll just drive and we'll go and get flowers. <laughs> Please don't copy me. What I'm trying to say is, let's honor people. You see, your mother is always cooking. One day, oh, mom, today I have $50. Can I go buy Chick fil A so that you can also rest? Amen. <laughs> oh, so let's honor people. They will tell you something. Amen. One day, Pastor Mike, sitting here, powerful man of God, he comes, he humbles himself, sit down here. Very soon, he'll be going to uh, fr uh, uh, France to minister. One day, say, Pastor Mike. No, I'm just <laughs> thinking of my next words. One day, somebody comes to say, Pastor Mike. I see your humility. Mm. God bless you so much. Mm. Take this check for your flight up to France. Mm. You are honoring the man. Amen. As in the, it's in the plane, traveling. You'll Amen. be thinking about what you did. Amen. You'll be thinking about what you did. Amen. And you also release a blessing. Amen. So when the Shunammite woman remembered the prophet Elisha, say, let's make a space for him that when he's sojourning, when he's traveling, he can spend some time here the soul of the prophet. The prophet told the servant, or asked the servant, does this woman need something? Cause and effect. God bless all of us. Let's put our hands together for Amen. the Lord.